His opponent is alma mater, the Buckeyes of Ohio State, the team that began Indiana's three-game slide. It's the Hoosiers and Buckeyes next. <laughs> Post-defense cannot let Jason Collier score down inside. Sunoco's fuels are made only from North American crude oil. Coquilene and Sunoco are teaming up to improve your drive dollar by dollar, mile by mile. We'll be back with the starting lineups after this. Very good Wisconsin team. They'll start off with Damon Stringer, their leader. You can see he leads in points and assists per game. Along with him at guard will be Nishan Coleman inside. Big John Lumpkin, who also plays a little football. Sean Stonerook, a very good player inside, number 40, and Jason Singleton will be at the other forward. There's head coach Randy Ayers, his record against Indiana. National pass national coach of the year. And for Indiana, let's take a look at A.J. Guyton will be at the at one of the guards. You can see just got to 100 assists. The only other freshman to do that, Isaiah Thomas and Randy Whitman. At the other guard, Michael Lewis, Jason Collier in the middle, along with Neil Reed and Charlie Miller. And those are the Papa John's starting lineups. Papa John's Pizza, better ingredients and better pizza. There's Bob Knight, the Indiana coach, with Randy Ayers. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. We'll be back with a tip after this. Teams will be meeting for the 152nd time. Indiana with the lead on the series and an impressive record at Assembly Hall. Indiana's won 10 of the last 11 games here at Assembly Hall. And Ohio State does not play well on the road. One and seven this year and a surprising victory. They won at Michigan the first game of the Big Ten season. There's Coach Bob Knight. You see Indiana's record at Assembly Hall. Very good, 88% of the time they win. Jason Collier, Miller, and Reed. Indiana looking for leadership to get them going. Here is the uh, series beginning back in 1905. And it's been a while since Ohio State has won here. Sam Licklider, Randy Drury, and Art McDonald are your Big Ten officials. You see Indiana is going to be a much smaller team. You've got the three small guards in there with Guyton, Reed, and Lewis. And for anybody joining us a little bit late, Andre Patterson is not dressed and will not play. We talked about Ohio State being a perimeter team. They don't like to go down inside, so Indiana has countered with a perimeter team of their own. It was Damon Stringer that hurt Indiana in the last ball game. He hit eight of 10 free throws at five assists. And here he is, number 24. He'll be the point man for this Ohio State offense. The Ohio State has not played very well on the road as they come off their excellent coming off the screen. Coleman coming off the low screen. Went up very quickly in the end and not able to stop that. Ohio State with the first two of the game and the lead. You think Indiana would try to put Collier down kind of by himself, down on the low block, try to get Lump into foul trouble. If you can see they did right there. Charlie Miller keeps it alive. Ohio State comes up with it. Quick hands by Stringer. He leads the break. Good shot fake by Singleton. Takes it in. Offensive foul. As he used that left arm to ward off Jason Collier. That's not a call that you get a lot of times in college. In the pros, they make this call all the time. As the offensive player definitely pushed off with his left arm as he was going to the basket. Purdue has defeated Michigan State by 15 in that ball game on the road at East Lansing. So a big win for the Boilermakers. Very impressive win. That takes him to eight and three in the conference. Shot up by Collier's missed, but a foul. So it looks like Indiana's going right inside. Both times down the floor, they go into Collier. Indiana's got to take the ball inside. That's one thing they really did not do at Ohio State. Going to take a look. You see Collier, nice pass by Reed. Collier able to get it. He slapped across the wrist. Nice job of getting it up on the board. Had the chance at the three-point play. Couldn't get it to fall. But Indiana's got to continue to go down inside. Right now, as he made the two free throws. He's the big guy. He's the only guy that owns that inside. Score tied now. There's a steal. Michael Lewis comes away with it. For 
tries to lead the break, takes oh. it all the way in, lays it in. Michael Lewis showed tremendous quickness, excellent hands. He had a, coming off a big game in Iowa where he didn't score much but had 11 assists. Michael Lewis really starting to get involved in the offense for Indiana. Indiana's first lead of the night. Collier coming off on the He's very, very quick. Back cut to Stonerook. What a pass by Stringer as he led Stonerook perfectly for the jam. Charlie Miller just can't, has to know where the ball is on defense. He gets lost once in a while. He gets caught up in just guarding the man. As soon as he turned his head, the defense aware of it. They just throw it right by him. There's Collier outside for three, and Jason Collier hits from the outside. And now he goes down. Lumpkin knocked him down. No call. It'll be an interesting battle inside. Lumpkin, a football tight end, more than a basketball player. And Collier, of course, has the basketball skills and experience. Outside shot is good by Singleton. And that's going to go against Lumpkin inside. He and Collier have really been battling inside. Sam Licklider with that call against the Buckeyes. Take a look at it inside as they go up for the shot right here. Pretty good position right there. There's not really any need to do any pushing. He had the position on him, but uh, Sam Licklider gets him the call as he need him right there. Indiana by one. Seven to six. Collier working inside, trying to get the ball. Got to get the ball into Collier. Right here, Charlie Miller's got to get the ball to him. He passes to Guyton instead. That shot blocked. Let's see, it was so close, Randy Drury couldn't see it, and it's going to go to Ohio State. Good job by Randy Drury. He wasn't sure. Rather than making the wrong call, he asked for help. Sam looked like he gave him that help. Ohio State gets the possession. And a chance to take the lead. Still early first half. One thing Ohio State did on the road 10 days ago was they really spread the court out as they did this time down the floor. They have a, a much quicker team than Indiana right there. They're going to want to spread it out, take 25, 30 seconds each time down the floor, make Indiana play defense and play it way outside. Good shot is missed. Collier goes down, and Lumpkin's going to pick up another foul. As he hit the deck and it forced Collier down as well. Well, that's one of those plays that you, the referee doesn't really want to make the call, but you talk about, you know, after he's made the move, he's, he's fallen down, but now he's tripped Collier, so you have to, you have to make the call. It's John Lumpkin's second foul. Ohio State not very deep on the bench right now either. He's an easy substitute. Lumpkin's got his second. And you can see they go to zone against the uh, out-of-bounds play. Indiana needs to move very, very quickly. Reed's open in the corner. Shot fake gets him more open, and he drills the three. Great shot fake by Neil Reed. Really utilized that to get the man up in the air. Took his time, still behind the three-point line. Slapped by A.J. Guyton. A stringer had picked the dribble up. Big Guyton's first. The substitution for the Buckeyes, number 15. These two teams met January 30th. Reed and Stringer both had big games. Indiana really struggled from the field goal percentage aspect. We'll come back to live action of travel. And remember, when you look at that, Indiana shot 34% at Ohio State, and they started the game off three for three. They were ahead nine to nothing as they hit three three-pointers, and they still shot 34% from the game. So uh, from that point on, it didn't get much better. Full court pressure by Ohio State. Otis Winston is in the lineup for the Buckeyes. He played well at Columbus. Got the foul. And go, and let's see. Coleman very, very lucky that he didn't get the foul as he slapped slapped A.J. Guyton right across the face as A.J. tries to lay, lay the ball up. Let's take a look at it. Watch A.J. go by. Now watch him get slapped right here, right there along the head. You wonder how the official can miss that when, when the guy just elbows him right, right in the head. Collier picked up the foul over the back. Also number 13, Tony Eisenhard, 6'7", sophomore in for the Buckeyes, Lumpkin is out. Here's a shot on the baseline, Singleton hits it. Great shot by Singleton. Collier did a nice job coming out to, to help, got a hand up in his face. Collier on the move uh, quickly again, and Eisenhardt will pick up his first foul. Looks like Collier came ready to play, and he's caused a lot of problems early for the Buckeyes. 
Yeah. Indiana has the two-point lead early first half. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. The versatility of Jason Collier. He's already scored inside. Does a nice job moving around here. He steps up, back screen, steps out. Lumpkin doesn't come out and get him. He'll take that three and he'll knock it down as we've seen him do that a number of times this year. Unbelievable that a guy of his size has that, that type of touch can step out and hit that three. First one he'd hit in the Big Ten. He's now one of two. Be very surprised if Ohio State, obviously they're going to be in a 2-3 zone. As, you, as we take a look at the field goals, Indiana 3 of 7, Ohio State shooting very well, 4 of 5. But I'll be very surprised if Ohio State doesn't stay in this 2-3 with their big man already on the bench. Stonerick had a hold of Charlie Miller. Charlie tried to go up for the rebound. Out of bounds to Indiana. Good position by the official. You see that? Hook by Stonerick. Again, out of bounds play is the zone defense for Ohio State. Against the zone, Jason Collier's got to do a job of stepping up behind, not just running to the basketball. You've got to pick your spots against the zone. You can't just continue to run to the basketball because that's basically what the defense is doing. They're just following the ball around. Another shot fake by Reed. Oh, good. Good job by drawing the defense to you by eight, by Michael Lewis, A.J. Guyton with the open shot. Even though he misses the shot, still excellent job by Michael Lewis of drawing the defense. Double team on Collier. He tries to break through that trap and draws the foul on Singleton. And that's two now on Singleton. So Ohio State getting into foul trouble. Ohio State with some very, very good athletes as you take a look at it. But the problem is they're all very, very small. You see, they got him boxed in, and now they reach. He's going to step through, and they, they grab his arms right there. And that's where the foul is called. Indiana already in the one and one with 15-10 left in the half. Collier hits the first home and comes back in. Singleton has to come out with those two fouls. Huge advantage for Indiana to be able to take the ball inside. That's the one thing Randy Ayers obviously did not want is his team getting in early foul trouble. He just doesn't have many bodies over there to put in. Collier hits both. He really seems to have more life enthusiasm in this afternoon's game. A couple of games here, he's been uh, held very low in scoring and playing time. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with Andre Patterson probably not being in there. They're going to get a double foul, I think, on... It's going to go on Coleman, or uh, it's going to go on Michael Lewis and Damon Stringer. And Stringer really can't believe it. Okay, so right at the free throw line. Right at the free throw line. You can see he grabs a hold of Michael Lewis right there and that, as he kind of lost his balance. Looks like Lewis had fouled him first, but Stringer grabbed the jersey, and they called both fouls. Indiana's over, uh, Ohio State's over the foul limit, so I, Indiana I, will shoot. I, I, they might have called an intentional foul is what they're calling. They, they called an intentional foul. It, it was not a double foul. First, I thought they were going to call a double foul, but they called an intentional foul. So Indiana shoots two free throws, just like a technical, basically, and then Indiana gets the ball out of bounds, so uh, really a big play because Ohio State loses possession. So there's no foul on Michael Lewis. It was Stringer for grabbing on the jersey. The intentional foul. Now Indiana has possession. Collier, one dribble, goes back to Lewis. Three is off. There's Reed. Shot fake. Couldn't get it. Now Miller has it. Good rebounding by the Hoosiers. Reed right, working good. hard on the shot fake. Oh, they just run away from Michael Lewis. Great job of reading the defense. Seeing what's there. He's really doing a good job running the Indiana offense. Five points for Michael Lewis. And timeout is called by Ohio State. It's a 20-second timeout. Randy Ayers is way out on the court to talk to Randy Drury. Not happy with how this game has gone. 15 to 8 as Indiana's gone to a seven-point lead. Now, Rick, Randy Ayers basically talking about the holding of Indiana. You can see the defense. Two guys get lost going for a guy on the baseline. Nobody picks Lewis up. Michael Lewis says, thank you very much. I'll take that layup and did. Ayers spent the entire 20-second timeout. Trying to make a point to Randy Drury. He still hasn't been back to talk to his team. The 
was a big turning point, and then it was a three-point play. Michael Lewis, it may be even a five-point play, because Michael Lewis made a free throw and a two-pointer for three for Indiana, and it took the pos possession away from Ohio State, so it gave them no chance to score. Stringer on the drive and a block on Lewis. That's how Stringer hurt Indiana in the last game, driving the middle, causing some foul situations as well as some assist opportunities. He dished the ball off. Stringer very upset with the call, and uh, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get a shot here, right, right here for himself. Outside shots off. Eisenhardt keeps it alive. Here's Stonebrook, hard off the glass. Both teams scramble for it. Wild shot by Stringer. We saw that shot, though at Columbus. He's got a little one-handed flip that uh, really is pretty accurate. Stringer's going to get a foul if he's being very, very aggressive right now. That's Guyton open, but a good shot block. And out of bounds. Ohio State, good hustle there on the defensive end. First turnover good, for Indiana. Good defense by Ohio State. You see Stringer right here. It's kind of a leaning, leaning push. He leans in there. He kind of throws it up there and uh, Obviously a very, very difficult shot to try to contain. Ohio State four turnovers, make it five. Sean Rook, or Stone Rook, is called for the steps. So Indiana playing with good intensity. Lumpkin comes back in. Interesting move. Two fouls on Lumpkin. Ohio State will have to be in a 2-3 zone. Is Winston going to get called with the hold right there? They're being very, very aggressive. Something that paid big dividends at Ohio State 10 days ago. But right now, it's gotten him in foul trouble. Still 13-32 to go. Indiana already in the 1-1. One and, one and one more foul, and Indiana will shoot two for the rest of the half. There's Winston. He missed the Purdue game with a uh, stomach virus. And he's back and ready to go here. Lewis is at the line. Indiana has had great success going to the foul line, but in the last few games, they haven't gone as much as they'd like. This is a good sign to see Indiana at the line early. And Lewis hits both. Indiana by seven. As they start to take control of this game. There's Stringer inside, help from Collier, turnover, as Lewis comes away with it. Got two Ohio State guys behind him. Somebody's got to be open. They're going to call the push on Winston right there. He's bodying him. You see, Randy Ayers is out on the floor. He's, at, he's going to have to get off the floor. They're going to give him a technical. That's been about the third time that he's been out on the floor. And that brings Bob Knight up, and there it is. He is going to get a technical. It was called by two officials at the same time. Technical on Randy Ayers. He's still not done. He better be careful. He he say. Yeah, he's going to get to watch the rest of it on TV. Two and you're out. That puts Michael Lewis at the line. He hits that. And Lewis good on both. Now Indiana ball. Let's watch. Take a look and you see Winston riding him all the way up the floor. Good job by Michael Lewis kind of dribbling into him, but uh, the official, it's, it's just a, a call the official has got to make right there. And Randy still going at it as they've called timeout. Sam Licklider has gotten right back in his face and uh, they said go to timeout. Indiana by nine. Randy Ayers still on his feet. It's the largest lead Indiana's had. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. Scott Brady, telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use of the picture descriptions or accounts of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. Randy Ayers has spent a lot of time here trying to make his point, and the officials are giving him an ear. Michael Lewis now shooting. First, he shot the personal foul that Winston. We showed when Winston bumped him coming up the floor. He made both of those. Now, Michael Lewis shooting the technical, and then Indiana will get the ball out of bounds. Made three out of four for Indiana, and uh, the lead's up 20 to 10. Dan Dockage on the Indiana bench. The Ohio State team will be very, very aggressive now as they come out of this timeout. You see they're in a 2-3 zone. Indiana going to have to do a good job moving into the open. Jason Collier going to have to pop in and out from the back. Collier, oh, good hands by Coleman. Here's the steal. Four, four on, on one. 
And Stringer gets it back to Coleman for the layup. You're exactly right, Ted. That fired up the Ohio State defense that came with a steal. No question. And for Indiana, the only thing you can do with it is Stringer knocks it away again. Look at him jump on the boards. Ohio State offensive rebound. This time it's Stonebrook, and he gets the rebound and follow. So four quick points by the Buckeyes. The thing Indiana needs to do, knowing that they're going to do that, get the ball to your scores, get the ball inside. Collier's got it on a rebound and a foul. They're going to get it before he shot the basket. Good strength by Jason Collier as he got banged by Winston on the arm. He'll get two free throws, but the basket did not count. Neil Reed takes it, rims out. Jason Collier just barely gets a hand on it, does a nice job, tips it to himself. Now watch his good strength right there. He shows he turns Winston in his face right there, knocks Winston down, goes to the goes to the line. I think that Jason Collier needs to show a little bit more aggressiveness take it out on some people from the other team when he's in there. There's the final score for those of you who watched the Purdue-Michigan State game. Uh, Oilers for a big road win out at East Lansing. Collier hits both free throws. And Indiana has an eight-point lead, 12-24 left, first half. I think Randy Ayers knows his team has had trouble on the road, and all they beat, all they beat Indiana at Columbus. This is a different situation. That's why he, got, he wants to keep this game close. Lumpkin inside. Can't get the layup, and Miller comes away with it. I think it's the Indiana's advantage to push whenever they get a chance. Try to get the ball down the floor as quickly as possible, especially Ohio State having so many two bodies. They've gone to the zone. 2-3. Again, shot fake by Reed. Reed shot faked himself out of a couple shots already. Right there, that was one right in front of the Ohio State bench. Stonerook has, has blood coming from his nose, so the official, they have to get a sub in there. Let's take a look at some other games. Michigan continued its winning ways as they defeat Penn State at Ann Arbor. There's the Purdue score again. Purdue moving up the ranks. Cincinnati, a big win, just as they pulled a big one against Tulane the other night. Clemson with the upset as they handle number seven, Maryland, although that was a home game. And Carolina big over Virginia. Xavier upset by St. Joseph's. Here we go, back to action. Indiana by eight. Miller posts inside. Here's Collier. 21 is Carlos Davis, 6'4", junior for the Buckeyes. That foul is going on Ohio State. John. And that's Lumpkin, his third now. And there's the uh, the difference, Ted. Two guys the same size, but with different athletic skills and Collier skills showing uh, a superiority here against Lumpkin. On the football field, I think I would definitely take Lumpkin if we were going to do the, do the blocking drill. But uh, as far as moving your feet and getting shots off in, in this game, I think uh, Jason Collier's got a huge advantage. Miller hits the first free throw, so Indiana is going to what made him successful. That's going to that free throw line. Miller had a good game against Ohio State. And he hits two free throws here. So Indiana's back out to the 10-point lead. They'd be really care careful with Stringer. He gets so quick, he almost lulls you to sleep. Good job by Stonebrook right there, using his quickness, seeing that Jason Collier's going to come out on the floor. And you, you take a look, Coach Knight's going to talk to Collier and tell him, you know, there's no need. Make him shoot that 20-foot jump shot. Don't run out there at him and let him drive around and draw fouls. Yeah, Collier's out here. He's not in a good position. Good job by Stonebrook going right by him. A much quicker, only about six foot seven, but very, very quick. I mean, you have to play to your strengths. One, one thing that Indiana has been doing today, but on the defensive end, a strength is not the seven-footer coming out to D up the 6'7 guy out on the perimeter. That's Ohio State's first free throw of the game. So it took them a while to get to the line. They're a perimeter team. And they don't draw that many fouls. They did, however, against Indiana. And it brought them to victory. That's because they were the drive and force Indiana to foul. Stonebrook now with six points. Collier trying to post up on Stonebrook. He's got the height and weight advantage. Miller shot fake, throw him in a little closer. 
long rebound to the Buckeyes as Stonebrook and Collier tie up. Charlie Miller shot fakes himself right out of that. As we talked about Neil Reed, almost too many shot fakes, and uh, that time Charlie Miller had the wide open three. Good rebound, good block out by Ohio State. Whistle inside, that's going to go against Indiana. Here's it on by Michael Lewis. Picks that one up. Harris Muyazinovich will check in for the first time. And take a look inside. Right here, as they come into the screen, they're going to call Michael Lewis on the hold right there. Collier comes out. And Harris in first sub. That is a real, made. real tough call right there as Indiana falls asleep on the out of bounds play and coach Knight going crazy because uh, on the sidelines I'm sure that they went over that probably 10 times in the walkthrough today as far as what to do against the out of bounds play it's a pre switch he walked out the hall coach Knight the crowd happy that he's made his return as Coleman hits the free throw you got to switch that on the out-of-bounds play, Charlie. That's the words Coach Knight just gave him. Because they didn't, Coleman got to the line for two. He made one, and Indiana brings it up. Indiana not getting a lot of real sharp movement the last couple times down against the zone. And Indiana gets to running around, and it looks like they're doing a lot of movement, but they're not creating openings right there. Michael Lewis has done an excellent job of drawing the defense to him. Great shot. Guy pulled that one back to avoid the block. It rimmed out, and Ohio State's going to pick up the foul on the rebound. Stoner up there going get, to get for the foul, but it's an excellent one-on-one -on -one move by A.J. Guyton. Shows you his athleticism. He's able to go in, double pump, get the ball up on the rim, and then he went back up for it. Just off by Guyton. Right here, you can see A.J. Guyton. Now, he's going to go back up and get it. You can see they call it right there, but that's really not. Uh, Stonebrook really did not push. A.J. just got a little bit off balance, and it made it look like that from the official's perspective, but a very, very tough call for Ohio State. Eisenhart is back in. Stonebrook comes out, so that's the eighth substitution for Ohio State. Only one for Indiana. Indiana's going with their starters as much as possible. It's got them an eight-point lead. Ohio State lineup. There's only one real scorer in there. In Stringer, Deshaun Coleman, a guy that can, he can score a little bit for you, but their main scorer is just not in the game. I mean, so you could really... Carlos Davis, 6'4", Junior. Davis. He makes a liar out of me right away, yeah. right? But uh, He only yeah. averages two and a half a game, so that's it for him. Now let's see who they're going to go to. Stringer is the guy that you got to stop. Long shot. That's Guyton who was ready for that three, and I think it's the zone. Indiana's going to have to go to the three-point shot. Well, you're going to have to take some of those shots. Indiana just gets to running around and moving the ball, but there's open shots out there, and against the zone, one thing you got to do is hit shots. One thing Indiana has not done lately, shooting 34, 40% from the field, is they have not hit shots. Here's Carlos Davis again trying to post up. Harris is on the floor. First and 10. That's where you need Lumpkin in the game. He had jump ball, and Indiana's going to get it. Let's take a look at Indiana's last three games. You can see points. Obviously, uh, that's the reason Indiana's getting beat. But field goals, Indiana only 68. Three-point field goals, 19. Yeah, there's a big difference. Uh, three-point field goals by the opponent shooting 50%, which is very, very impressive. And also, Indiana being outshot from the free throw line by six in three games. One thing that uh, Coach Knight has always pinpointed as one of the keys to why Indiana has always won. Drive inside by Lewis. That goes to Miller. Oh, and he gets the roll. Great effort by Charlie Miller to get that up on the board. There was a guy all over him. The great penetration by Michael Lewis is what set it up. Good penetration. Getting inside the zone and finding the open man as we take a look. Watch, watch him penetrate right through the middle. Now the guy has to come up. Charlie Miller's open. Good job of, of preparing to get hit by the defense and still going up strong, getting it in the basket. Three now on Singleton, so he comes out. Miller tries to make the three-point play. In and out, and Stonerook comes away with it. 
Indiana now by 11, long pass. Stringer just hasn't controlled the game. He's out of the lineup now, but has not controlled this game as he did in Columbus. Ohio State fans have to look out there and uh, wonder what, what team is on the floor. There's a, a number of guys I'm sure that they weren't planning on seeing play, but uh, because of of injuries, sickness, whatever it might be, academics, uh, they just don't have many bodies over there. And foul on Harris, academics, number 10, Trent Jackson is not here. He missed a class this week, and Randy Ayers kept him at home. Hooray for Randy Ayers for standing up uh, for things he believes in, especially academics. So this is the chance for Tony Eisenhart, 6'7", sophomore, not listed in the official program. He's listed on the pre-printed sheet game day. Doesn't even have his name on the back. They're making it real tough uh, on his uncle. Well, so he's a late addition, but that's how few of numbers this Ohio State team has. Already two walk-ons on the team, and now Eisenhardt a third. And here's Lewis bringing it down. So this is the game Indiana's controlled right from the start. You see this zone really falls back. The, the wings are going to be wide open. You're going to have to step up and take some of those shots. They just really do not want to give anything to Indiana down in the middle. That's a shot AJ's just going to have to hit. And he does. He knew the shot was coming, and he was ready for it. Indiana by 13. Coleman slapped away by Miller. Good defense by Charlie Miller. Seeing the ball coming off his man when there's nothing that his man is, is obviously going to do there. Comes off, helps, knocks the ball away. That's the type of defense I think the Indiana fans are used to seeing. Good screen by Charlie Miller down inside. You can still screen against the zone. A.J. Guyton doing something Indiana hasn't done very well of late, and that's shoot the basketball. Oh, right inside. Lumped ahead a shot. Missed it. Falls asleep on the out-of-bounds play. Gives a layup to the Buckeyes. Well, a couple mistakes right there. Whoever's guarding the ball, and in this case, I think it was A.J. Guyton, you, you cannot let the man, you cannot let them throw the ball there. You have got to make them throw the ball either to the corner or out front. And then as far as Harris, Harris has got to keep his body between the basket and his man and make his man cut to the corner. You just can't let him take a step inside. Good look at Stone Rook as he hits that free throw. He draws there and right nostril, keep the blood out, keep it in the game. This and there's Winston with a rebound. Good job by Ohio State going after the ball. He's beating Indiana to the ball. Good aggressive play by Ohio State. One dribbling shot is off the backboard by Winston. Here comes Indiana Miller. Ball tipped away. And Guyton chases down his own pass. I think it was going to be a pretty good pass, but as you mentioned, it was tipped away. Great, great individual play by A.J. Guyton. Things that he needs to do more of right there for Indiana, for this Indiana team to come out of a four and six Big Ten start. Nine points now for Guyton. He's shown some leadership this afternoon. Davis decides not to take that shot. Trips that one. Ohio State comes away with it. Good hands by Stonebrook right there. And Lumpkin takes it up strong and gets the roll. Stonebrook made that play possible right there by coming up with the ball, and firing it out there, and then down inside. John Lumpkin is going to be the recipient. This is a good hard deep play by Ohio State. Right here, look right there. That's the good play right there by Stonebrook. Did a good pass. Not much more Charlie can do except try to avoid that foul because he's not going to stop Bibble, Big Lumpkin from going for the shot. Vanderbilt comes in for Mouye Zinovich. Vanderbilt has 10 points against Iowa. Vanderbilt's also been having some back problems with Jason Tyler had earlier in the year. And Vanderbilt's got his first rebound as Lumpkin misses badly. A lot of fouls first half of this game. Going to call a foul on Carlos Davis. There's another one. I'm sure that official couldn't hear you, but uh, <laughs> just as his whistle blew, as you said, foul. Well, I look up, and there's still seven minutes left in the first half, and it seems like we've been going on for an eternity right here. But uh, Which favors Indiana. Oh, going to the free throw line, and this time of game will favor Indiana heavily, which they didn't do at Ohio State. Here's Reed. Well, we could see in the graphics from the last three games, Indiana 
shot 72 free throws. The opponents have shot 78. Whenever that happens, uh, you could guess in Indiana not faring very well. Reed, one of the top free throw shooters in the conference. It's both. And we've got timeout. Indiana has built their lead to 14. A lot of it from the free throw line. Look at the free throw. 17 free throws made by Indiana in the first half. 17 of their 37 points. A lot of that just has, has to do with just being out man. Right there is just what Indiana wants. You want John Lumpkin taking the taking the shot, not what Ohio State wants to do. But again, good aggressive play by Ohio State. Comes up with the loose ball. Carlos Davis with the one-on-one -on -one move. Right now, Stonebrook and Stringer are really the only two scores, if you will, for Ohio State. There's Winston as Lewis had good block out position. And Indiana will go to the free throw line once again with 6.28 left in the half. Neil Reed, just a very smart player, always in the right place at the right time, especially when you get up over seven fouls. It always finds a way to get to that free throw line. Winston now is fourth foul, still in the first half. So that tells you Randy Ayers doesn't want to go to that bench. He does this time to bring Coleman in. He doesn't want Winston to foul out in the first half. Well, Carlos Davis is a guy that hasn't been playing a lot, as you mentioned, uh, only averaging a couple points a game. But there's just not many more bodies over there to go to. Great, good on that free throw. He and Lewis are right at the top of the Big Ten standings in free throw shooting. And Indiana ranks second in the country now in free throw percentage. They only trail Western Kentucky. And I, I think that's an interesting point you bring up there because a lot of people, I think, prob probably feel like maybe this Indiana team is not a good shooting team. If you shoot that type of percentage from the free throw line, that tells me that you're a very, very good shooting team and it just needs to gain its confidence and I think it'll start shooting better from the field. That's a good point. That's the one thing that's hurt Indiana. Field goals made in a game. Traveling called on Coleman. That's eight turnovers now for Ohio State. Sam Licklider caught him with the hop. This Ohio State team not enjoying their trip to Indiana this week. Defeated at West Lafayette on Wednesday. And now down early here to Indiana. This foul, though, goes against Mandeville on the inside. Goes against Richard Mandeville. Ohio State comes down and all of a sudden gets right back in a man-to-man -man defense. You'd think what Indiana would want to do is obviously just take the ball down inside. Richard Mandeville gets a foul on the, on the screen, which basically turns into a turnover and possibly two points for Ohio State. Puts Coleman at the line. He had a big game against Indiana. It's the first. Eisenhard checks back in for Ohio State. He's going to go for Lumpkin. Couldn't find him for a minute. He's not an easy guy to hide. <laughs> Lumpkin up at the half court line. Didn't want to draw that foul inside on the lane. He comes out. And now Indiana by 14. Six minutes left. Lewis on the drive. Travel. He had to take an extra step to put on the brakes and call for traveling. He saw the opening, tried to get by Stringer, but Stringer very, very quick, able to, to get back. Michael Lewis not able to get around him. Charlie Miller's got to do a better job of stepping out right there. Good job by A.J. Guyton getting up, making the block. Lewis gets it slapped from behind. Collision, Coleman and Reed. And Coleman picks it up. And also Miller and Lewis were down on the floor as they hit but they're both up two now on Coleman either one of these teams can, can afford to have anybody else injured it's Andre Patterson sitting it out in street clothes today for Indiana and Ohio State they've already lost about three or four of their key players to injuries and uh, in some cases season ending Tim Garl off the Indiana bench he wants that floor wiped up to avoid any further injuries to players. That's taken care of. I think this is a very important five minutes for both teams right here. Ohio State obviously needs to get back in the basketball game as they go down 15 right now, 40 to 25. But they need to get it back under 10 points before halftime. Obviously, Indiana could really take over the game if they could get it up over the 20-point mark. 
be very, very difficult for this undermanned Ohio State team to come back. That's nine now for Reed, and Indiana needs a game like that. Eight games left, five of them at home, and Indiana needs to finish out this season strong going into the NCAA tournament. If Indiana doesn't finish out strong, they will not be in that NCAA tournament on break. Back cut by Coleman, and he gets the basket. Indiana beat defensively that time. Not only beat, but Michael Lewis, again, earlier in the game, we talked about Charlie Miller turning his head, not seeing the basketball. That time, Michael Lewis got caught. Indiana, once again, once again gets caught with the screen down here, as they call. That one's on Reed. That's interesting, because Reed usually gets the call as he's trying to come around the screen. Let's you take watch, a look. Uh, you see how Michael Lewis had his head turned? He's watching his man. That's why Coach Knight talks all the time when he talks about defense. There's two things. you got to know where your man is, but most importantly, you have to know where the ball is. Your, your guy can't score without the ball, so you got to know where that ball is. This puts Coleman at the line. He's had a good first half, 10 points now. Ohio State hanging in there. A nice job, as we mentioned. If they could get it down into the eight, ten-point range, I think they would feel a, a very a big victory as they went into the halftime. Still five minutes left in the half. A little full court pressure, but Indiana breaks it easily. Ohio State is back in the man-to-man, -man, and this is where you would think you want Mandeville down inside. Michael Lewis, a tough shot right there, missed everything. Mandeville tracked it down. Eisenhart came from behind, and Mandeville is called for throwing it out of bounds, not to the liking of this home crowd. Indiana very sloppy handling the basketball. Michael Lewis takes a bad shot, misses everything. Indiana goes after it. Good hustle again by Ohio State hanging in there. Stringer, a quick jumper, is off. Tapped away by Guyton. Now out to Lewis. Lewis takes it all the way in. And I'll tell you, for two little guys, Reed and Lewis really put the old haymaker on Stonebrook. <laughs> they buried him under the IU basket. Randy Ayer's not happy with it, but uh, that's going to the basket. I mean, Randy Ayer's wanting to charge. Stonebrook has got to stop and take the charge. He continued to back up with Michael Lewis, and because of that, he ends up underneath the basket. Probably and a foul about right there. Good tip in. Moving back, and Eisenhart gets the tap. There's Randy Ayers. He wanted to charge. For guys that haven't gotten a lot of playing time, Eisenhart, Carlos Davis have done a nice job coming in there and doing some good things. They're going to get Carlos Davis on the hold out, out front. Davis just trying to stay with Reed. Jantonio checks in now for Ohio State. Take a look right here. You see Stonebrook, he, he kept backing up until he got almost all the way underneath the basket. Did a nice job, finally, of stopping right here. It's a tough call for Ohio State. It looked like he had position, but the official felt like, you see Michael Lewis laying on top of him, Neil Reed coming off the other side of him. Stonebrook already has gauze stuck up his nose. It's not been a, a good first half. Guyton good on the first free throw. As he's got 10 points now. Indiana scored almost half of their points from the free throw line. Here's Stringer, quick move inside. He goes to Stonebrook for the jumper off. Reed chases that one down. Good block out by Mandeville. Left the ball hanging all by itself right there. Neil Reed able to come up with it. Reed on the drive. Here's Miller. And a whistle. That's going to go on Reed. This time, Jantonio took the charge. Randy Ayers happy about the call. But he is still on these officials. Bob Knight pacing the floor in front of the Indiana bench. Take a look at it right here. Now, what Sam looked like, he's watching the ball right there. He's watching the ball. Didn't even see the play. And then he, he ended up calling the charge. I, I, I think it was a pretty good call. I think Jantonio was there. Neil Reed. Didn't have a lot of momentum, but he, he was, Neil was thinking about the pass. I mean, he's got to think about jump stop, make the pass. Said he continued on. He ran into Jantonio. I think it's a, pr a pretty good call, but it was interesting. Uh, Sam Licklider was kind of following the ball right there, but he ended up making the charging call. 
Santonio, a really tough kid, only averaging a point and a half. He's got two now, and Indiana takes time out. They lead it by 11. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. Indiana by 11, 329 left, and Indiana is putting some points on the board. 44 already here in the first half, and they've done it from the field, from the free throw line. Only nine field goals, but 22 free throws for Indiana. That's made free throws. You can see they've taken 27, so half of their points have come from the free throw line. And a lot of Ohio State scoring, 15 points coming from their subs. Indiana is 13-1 and one in games they lead at halftime. That Iowa game, the first game they lost last Tuesday, and they're 13-2 and when they score 70 points or more in a game. They've got 44 right now, so this is a team that has to win by scoring, not by playing defense. See Indiana kind of standing around as Ohio State goes back to the man-to-man. -man. Lewis, that's a three. And Mandeville with good position. Eisenhardt has to pick up the foul to avoid the easy tip-in. The thing that Indiana needs to understand, especially Richard Mandeville in there right now, he's so much bigger than any of the Ohio State players. If he just establishes position, it's going to make it very difficult for Ohio State to get him out of there. One thing about Ohio State, though, Indiana had that lead up to 16. They've nibbled it down to 11 right now, and as I mentioned, with the five-minute mark, very important for them, I think, psychologically, both teams. If one could get it up close to 20, Indiana, if Ohio State can get it down under 10. Be very important for the second half. Mandeville hits two. Luke Jimenez checks in for the first time, and Lewis comes out. Carlos Davis back in for Coleman. So really, uh, Ohio State looking at Stone Rook and. Stringer, the only two players, uh, a real scoring threat for Ohio State. Stringer has the ball. Dish inside. Stringer's got nowhere to go. And out of bounds, Indiana. A little two-man game with Stone, Rook, and Stringer, but there's just no place to go down there. Ohio State, Stringer going to have to start jacking some three-pointers up and uh, start taking some outside shots for Ohio State. Miller passed inside, now goes back out. Good hustle. Jantonio kicked it away, so a new 35. Sam Licklider did call that a kick, so they will reset the shot clock right there. Reed, tough place to get it. He got away with it quickly, though. Stops for the jumper, and good. Neil Reed, 10 feet on the baseline. Tough shot by Neil Reed as the defense come, up, come around behind him, tried to knock it away. There's Stone Rook. He can hit that shot. And he does. Indiana put too much pressure on Davis. But Stone Rook continues to answer, continues to hang around. Good quick hands by Strick. Right there, able to knock it away. That's got to be goaltend. Carlos Davis takes it, and Miller got his hand caught in the net, and that's goaltend. So Ohio State down to coming 10. back quickly, down and now by 10. Indiana was just up 14. Ohio State with two quick baskets. This is where Indiana's had trouble. Last two and three minutes of a half, they've let teams get right back in it. I think a lot of that has to do with maturity. I think they relax just a little bit when they when they do something good rather than continue to push it, continue to go, continue to move that lead up. I think they relax a little bit and other teams take advantage of it. Missed by Guyton. Now Ohio State a chance to get it into single digits. Stringer gets the play from Randy Ayers. Here's Stonebrook. Great position to get it. Slapped by Mandeville, now tied up. And Ohio State retains possession. See, Stonerook got down there. He did a, a good job of coming to get the ball. Now, he's got to catch it and do something. He needs to go right up right there. Now he's double teamed. Good hands by Mandeville to knock it away. You can see everybody all over it right there. They ended up calling a jump. You stand on that block with it very long, and somebody's going to come down and double team you, especially against this team right here. They need to throw it in in a hurry. His three has already went by. Good hands by Luke Jimenez. They made a substitution. Tenth turnover, and it caused them a problem on the out-of-bounds play. As Indiana stole it, Davis nearly comes up with a steal. Here's Reed. 
Should have been ready for that three. Got to be ready. He's got to drive it to the baseline. You've got a four on five opportunity right there. You're going to call D'Antonio with the hold on Neil Reed coming off the screen. Similar call that we've seen other games by Reed. That puts him back at the line. Forty-eight first half points now for Indiana. This is terrific. And the Hoosiers back to their pattern of getting to that free throw line. And really, Ted, though, an Ohio State team that doesn't have a lot of offensive power, they're up to 38 points in this first half. Ohio State's done a nice job making some things happen, knocking the ball away, keeping the ball alive, going after the ball. They've been very, very aggressive, and they've uh, been able to hang in. They're still only down 11. The three-pointers make it eight. And Reed misses on the second. One minute. Final minute of the half. We see the clock lower right. Here's Stonebrook. He wants to take Mandeville. Too easy for him to get right to drill right to the block before Mandeville tried to stop him, but the pass to Davis goes out of bounds. It's not any pass right there. Charlie Miller did an excellent job of getting down, taking that pass away. Carlos Davis knocked it away. He knocked it out of bounds. Indiana's got to go through this press. It's just, there's not, not that much of it there. Then you have to attack it. I think Indiana, once they get it across half court, feels like they've accomplished what they wanted to do in breaking the press. That's when you really need to attack it and really take it to the basket, make that team pay for pressing it. And this time, though, they do run, run time off the clock to give Ohio State less time when they do get the ball back before the halftime buzzer. Guyton, spinning time. move inside. Second time showing his athleticism as the shot clock off now. Ten seconds left. You can bet Stringer's going to get this last shot. Somebody for Indiana needs to come up, kind of double-team him, make him give the ball up. He takes it all the way in. That puts Coleman open, shot the buzzer off, and Indiana has got the halftime lead. 51 first-half points for the Hoosiers. They lead it by 13 in Bob Knight's 950th ball game. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. Field goal percentage favors Ohio State. Amazingly, because not only does the field goal percentage favor Ohio State, Ohio State scores two more field goals. Uh, they stay even, rebounding. They shoot the better percentage, as you see, but look at that stat. The second one down the free throws, unbelievable. The Indiana shoots 25 of 31, over 30 free throws. Uh, a very, very slow game. You can see three-point field goals also, something Indiana usually not the team leading in. You can see it doing a nice job right here. Rebounding Indiana, you know, Ohio State really holding its own on the board, 18-18 to 18 in turnovers. Ohio State up over the 10 mark with 11. Indiana only seven. Those are the Citizens Insurance halftime stats. Citizens Insurance Company is proud to be selected as the company of the year by the Independent Insurance Agents of Indiana. And you're watching Big Ten Basketball on Creative Sports. Stone Rook 10, but really drops off after that for the Buckeyes. Very interesting. Stringer only took four shots, one of four from the field, their leading score. So he's not having the game he had at all previously against the Hoosiers. Indiana, on the other hand, very, very balanced. As you can see, Neil Reed, Lewis, and Guyton, their small three guards leading the way. 12, 12, and 12, and Jason Collier not far behind, even though Collier only took two shots from the field. He scored 9.6 of those coming from the free throw line. Indiana starters, 49 of the 51 points. Look at the foul trouble. Winston for Singleton and Lumpkin. So Ohio State needs to be careful. If they're still staying in a man-to-man, -man, Indiana will want to go into Collier. Oh, he's wide open right there. They need to get him the basketball. Good job by Ohio State. Indiana's got to pound that ball inside to Collier, get him the ball early to make it very, very tough on Lumpkin, who already is in major foul trouble. Starting line for both teams here in the second half. Ohio State slowly setting up the offense. Good move on the baseline, but Singleton gets caught up by Reed. Stone Rook all the way in, and Miller comes away with it. Both teams a little bit in slow motion. Oh, what a what a move by Guyton. 
tremendous all the way quickness. inside and dished it back out. So right there, you got to get the ball inside. Neil Reed with the foul. He comes over the back of Stringer. Good hands by Stringer. And right there, the thing Coach Knight is upset about, you see him right there, exactly what he's talking about. He's going to get into the defense and then bounce pass into Collier, who's gotten the position twice down the floor in Indiana, not yet gotten him the basketball. Turnover. He has a foul on Reed. Good, good pass right inside. there. Good pass by Ohio State. Good job of Lumpkin doing a nice job holding Collier off. Lumpkin, the kind of guy I would think that Indiana would probably want to play behind. Not, not someone with a very good shooting touch. I would think he would be the guy you'd want to make turn around and shoot that 10-footer. Make him show you that he can make that jump shot two or three times before you start fronting. Lumpkin hits that free throw. One. So Ohio State really getting the best start of this half. As they cut into Indiana's lead, but much more aggressive at the start. And the lead now 11. Not a lot of enthusiasm in Indiana's play. A lot of walking around. Collier's been open two or three times down inside Indiana yet to get him the basketball. When he gets open down there, you got to get him the ball. Guyton on the baseline hits that jumper. That is great form on his shot. That's why he's so good at those three-pointers. Indiana's first point to the half. Lewis comes away with a steal. He really got up on that jump shot, too, as Michael Lewis did a nice job of getting around the offense right there. Indiana almost getting in each other's way down here. There's a good job of getting the ball inside. Make them play defense. Not a very good shot by Collier. I'm sure Coach would like to see the, the jump, little jump hook. Turn to the left. Drive. That's the way he likes to go. But Coleman responded at the other end. Ohio and State taking advantage of its quickness, getting out in open court situations. Trip there by Stringer as Lewis goes down. Personal foul, Ohio State. Number 24, David Stringer. Coleman really doing a nice job of scoring. Only 8.8 .8 a game. He goes right around Guyton right there. Indiana, no answer underneath. Nobody down there to come over. Now, once again, you see Ohio State in the zone. 2-3 zone. Indiana had a lot of open shots against that zone. In and out by Collier at the free throw line. see Collier coming out of the game. Coach Knight not interested in that jump shot. It's nice when it goes in, but he wants his seven-footer against this team down inside, rebounding and drawing fouls. Patient shown by Ohio State. Ten seconds to shoot. Stringer from way outside. Off. Stonerook followed with good position, and Miller fouled him on the rebound. Good job by Sean Stonerook. Getting inside. He makes a good pass to Stringer. Stringer pops the three-pointer, and then Stonebrook continues right down the lane. Watch him continue right down the lane, positions himself. Excellent position right there. Charlie Miller out of position. Not only lets him have the rebound, but then fouls him, gives him the opportunity for a three-point play. Good play by Ohio State. So they work themselves right back in this game early in the half. That's four now on Lewis. Stonebrook. The same Indiana team early in the year had a 22-point lead against Michigan State. They knocked it all the way down to a four-point game with 14 minutes to go in the game in the second half. So uh, Indiana team that doesn't know what to do with the lead. Mandeville on top. Here's Reed. Nearly stolen by Stringer. Wow. You see, there's just not much movement. A lot of standing around, and they end up taking a, a very, almost a one-on-one -on -one type shot, but they're not getting the ball down inside like they were. Ohio State with the three. It's a five-point game. Coleman comes down quickly to fire that three. 16 points for Coleman. Nearly double his usual average, and the lead is down to five. They got... So whistle inside. Let's see if Manville setting the screen for Guyton. And that's what it's going to be. So 
it goes right back to Iowa State. This has to not have started any worse. That's the second time this game the Vanderbilt has been called for a screening foul. And uh, I mean, once the official makes that call, you know better. You just you got to go stand in, in one place. He continues to move on the screen, and the official got him again. Back cut. Singleton misses the shot. Neil Reed picks up the foul. These are just simple, basic defensive rules that the Indians get beat on. And the one rule that I know Coach has been upset with this team all year on is, is that they turn their head and they lose sight of the basketball. That's the third time I know we've mentioned it today. Charlie Miller got beat on it. Michael Lewis gets beat on. Now watch Neil Reed when he turns his head right here. See how he turned his head? You can't, you can't turn your head. How do you play defense? You've got to open up. You turn your body open up so at least you see the ball. If he had opened up, he probably would have knocked that ball away. Instead, he had his head turned. They threw it right by his ear. And there's Coach Knight going over with Reed. Singleton at the line. The other important thing is you look up at the scoreboard, Indiana with five fouls, 15 minutes still left. So Ohio State, a couple more fouls, and uh, Ohio State will be traveling to the free throw line. Timeout, Indiana one team foul. So the Buckeyes are making a run. They trail it by only three. Time out of bounds the last time. Ohio State was just close. It was 10 to eight. It was a two point in right now it's a three-point lead and this crowd getting a little edgy as well Bob Knight really on the team at that last time out and now is the time for them to respond the crowd's ready let's see if this Hoosier team is ready Jimenez inside Mandeville on the jump shot good from outside 17 feet give Richard Mandeville some credit for stepping up at a very very tough time Collier just got taken out for taking the 15, 20 foot jump shot. And that's there between you and me. You would have taken that shot. I'm passing on that ball. Never saw one. I'm back. passing that one. Indiana by five. Stringer inside. Stolen by Jimenez. And he slows it up. Great right play. Nice play by the in trouble when they're, they're too tight inside. There's not enough room for Stringer to move. And you can see that time he tried to pass the basketball, but there's just nothing there. Well, as powerful as Indiana's offense was first half, it has really struggled here second half until A.J. Guyton hits a three. And you see Indiana. a little emotion in A.J. Guyton right there, too. He knew that was a big bucket right there in Ohio State. Wants a 20-second timeout. 20-second timeout. Randy Ayers could feel the change in momentum. Indiana only had four points until that three-pointer, and that gives them the eight-point lead. Watch the spacing here. Yeah, let's look at the spacing. When Ohio State, now look, they got, there's 10 guys inside the, the free-throw line right there, down inside the paint, and Ohio State not going to get good things when that happens. Ohio State wants to spread the floor out like they did in Columbus 10 days ago. That's when Stringer can really drive the lane. He can dig, penetrate, do what he does best. There's that many guys in the lane. There's just not many passes. Watch A.J. Guyton. He hits it. They take the camera off him, but he showed a little emotion, too, like he knew that was a really big one. I think this team's lacked a little emotion all year, and it's something that they really need in their play. It's great when you're a, a player like Guyton can have 100 assists on the year and score like he has. Especially tonight, 15 points, steal by Miller. He's going in, layup is good, and a foul. Good play by Charlie Miller, not only to get the opportunity to, for the three-point play, but great hands defensively. It's a, take a look at it right here, good hands, active hands, able to knock it away. Coach always wants you moving your hands up and down, try to knock that ball away. Nice job, good strength right there. It's the second time today he showed good strength with the basketball, and he'll get his second opportunity to three-point play. And this crowd shows its reaction. The IU bench, they're standing up in front of the team. They're very excited, led by Harris, as that play by Miller went down. They missed on the free throw. Jimin is hustling for it. Lumpkin throws it back out of bounds off Indiana. So a good play by Lumpkin to keep the possession. But Indiana's moved the lead from 3 to 10 with a 7-0 run. 
job by A.J. Guyton getting up and over. Oh, Great stone pass. rook on the lob from Springer. Play set up beautifully. That is not an easy pass to make. He's way out there, about 35 feet away. Here's Miller inside, goes right up on Stone Rook. Quick shot pays off for Indiana. Only quick shot, but again, Charlie Miller showing his strength inside. That time, not able to knock him off the block as he went up strong. Stone Rook. Lumpkin, Manville playing off him. They'll let him take that shot. Now he comes inside. Good job by Mandeville playing back and then getting back on his man, knocking the ball away. Charlie Miller knocked it out of bounds. Stringer came over to help. Charlie Miller looks at his hands. He knows that's one he'd like to have back. Thought he should have had that. This crowd helping right now. It, this and crowd, crowd been around a long time. Obviously knows this Indiana team's been struggling. Needs as much help as they can get right now. Singleton, good pass inside. Lumpkin bobbled it. And now a foul. This one's going to go against Charlie Miller before the shot. Well, it's an excellent pass by Singleton inside. One that uh, Lumpkin should have come up with. It would have been an easy two points. Instead, they get him on the on the floor. That's Indiana's sixth team foul. Next one will put Ohio State into the one and one. That's three now on Miller. Ohio State with two team fouls. So. Buckeye should get to the line uh, much quicker than Indiana. Stringer much quicker than Luke Jimenez, but much harder for Stringer to shoot the ball up over Luke Jimenez as he's a little bit bigger. Still plenty of time on the shot clock, down to 12. Wow, this is Guyton, and Stringer throws the ball back at Mandeville. And let's see, that's going to be a technical foul on Stringer, and then he's on the support, Randy Ayers is way out on the floor. Now Bob Knight is there. I think, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Now the two coaches together. Randy Drury and Bob Knight right at the 10-second line, and Sam Licklider has Randy Ayers. Now the officials are the conversing at the... The official came over and called a technical foul on Stringer for throwing the... Or, or, you know, for, for whatever he and Mandeville did after the play, he called a technical on Stringer. Randy Ayers went out on the floor, very unhappy. Nothing was called. Coach Knight came down, thought that Randy Ayers should have had the technical call. The officials, the best thing they could do is huddle up and uh, get things going all on the same track right now. So the teams are around their coaches, and the three officials are right at half court trying to decide how they're going to call this play. A lot of things happen there, and it's very difficult for all three of them to come up with what happened. Let's see. Here's the play. Stringer has it. Mandeville holds him, and Stringer fires the ball right back at him. Licklider, Sam Licklider underneath sees that. Randy Drury makes the initial call outside. Randy Drury makes the call. Then the other official... Art McDonald comes all the way down. He called the technical originally on Stringer. Then Randy Ayers comes out on the floor, obviously very unhappy, feeling like Richard Mandeville had caused the problem. Now Coach Knight and Randy Ayers talking a little bit as, as obviously it got very emotional out there. They were both very upset. Now they're just talking, talking over. There's the two coaches, two officials. Uh, things are a, a little calmer now. But no one has heard the verdict yet either on what's going to transpire. I think it's still on this play. Still pretty heated. I think we're a little bit calm, more calm at this point in time, but I think it's still very heated. If there is a second technical on Randy Ayers, he will be gone. He received a technical in the first half. I think he's just figuring out he's been called for a technical. Look at the reaction on his face. Well, and the, and the officials all in this case have there's not a lot they can do. I mean, Randy Ayers, that's about the fourth time today he has walked out on the basketball floor. When you walk out on the floor, the, the officials have nothing else they can do except tee you up. That's exactly right, and they've been a little lenient with that. And, 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 he, and he, as a coach, has been around long enough that he knows it very well, too. 
And, and the, the thing Coach Knight is upset about is, hey, you walk out on the floor, you should get a technical, and he's wondering why the officials have let him get by with that without calling the technical. As the officials explain to the scorer's table, there's a lot of emotion riding on this game. You can feel it in the fans. You can see it in the players. Obviously, Indiana, a team that started out very good. They won the NIT. I think there were a lot of high expectations for the team the last three games. They've not played very well. All of a sudden, they're four and six, tied for eighth place in the Big Ten. It's the team a little on edge. The fans on edge. Ohio State, obviously. Uh, Here's from underneath the basket. There's the foul. There's Mandeville. There's Stringer. And now some words. And Licklider looking right at Stringer. And see, this is Art McDonald. He came down. He was at half court. And he calls the technical on Stringer right there. Sam Licklider was not going to make any call. There's Coach Knight and Randy Ayers. Which, to tell you the truth, I, I, I don't know if uh, Art McDonald felt like he threw the basketball at him. You know, so he, he felt like he, he was obligated, that he had to make that technical call. But Sam Licklider was there. I would have thought Sam Licklider, being closest to the call, would have made the technical call. I think both those coaches have a lot of respect for each other. And that's why, even though they were so heated a few minutes ago, that, that they've been able to calm down and talk things out between them. But now we're still waiting for the officials to decide what call they're going to make. I, we're anticipating that Randy Ayers has picked up his second technical foul, although he's still on the Ohio State bench. And Bob Knight does not seem to be agreeing with what is about to come down here. And he's trying to get a clarification again from Art McDonald. So he did see a technical call, but we really don't know yet who that will be against. Be interesting how the teams react when they when they actually do get back out on the floor. Indiana, obviously, a very young team. Be interesting to see how Indiana reacts. You know that Ohio State's going to come out. They're going to be very very aggressive. Stringer, I would I would expect to be extremely aggressive out there on the floor. Well, let's see. The Ohio State team has come out ready to play. Still a lot of time left in the game. 13 minutes and 10 seconds still left in this basketball game and. Uh, Remember, Ohio State was down 13 at half. It's 10 right now, but they got they cut the lead all the way to three at one point in time. That's the foul that on Guyton. We're picking it up from the uh, PA announcement. So that puts that puts that technical foul assessed against that puts Ohio, Ohio State number 24. Stringer and also a team foul for Stringer, his fourth for Ohio State, it's third team foul. Then a bench team foul called against Ohio State and under rules, that is the second against Ohio State's bench. So Coach Ayers must leave the bench. And a technical foul also was called against Indiana's bench. That was the final call in the season. As Randy Ayers leaves the court, it was called a bench team foul but I mean basically it's a technical on the bench which is a second technical foul so Randy Ayers does have to leave so Stringer will shoot the one and one on the drive to the basket this is what started it all and no one needs to be around the lane tough tough circumstances to go up there after being being away from the court so long opposing crowd and yet he stuck both of them in there. Good job by Stringer. In he hit situation. Both. Now we're going to go to the other end. This is the technical foul on the Ohio State bench. So Lewis will go to the line for two. And we'll have to figure out who will get the ball out of bounds as well. Lewis good on the free throw. If I'm not mistaken, I thought I heard them say that they also called a technical on the Indiana bench. I, I don't know if I don't know if that's true. And that would be for uh, Coach Knight crossing the half court line, more than likely. But, but Ohio State is not shooting shooting the, uh, the technical.
and they're giving the ball to Ohio State. So uh, uh, unless that was uh, I, I don't know. Right, that was the, the, the seventh team foul just happened. So the t two shots that Stringer took were for a technical. Uh, with the seventh team foul, should have been a one and one. If there was a technical also called on Indiana, they should have shot two free throws. They did not. Ohio State getting the ball out. I don't know what's going on, but I know it's Ohio State's ball. Indiana's got a 10-point lead. And the important thing is, has this momentum changed uh, for either one of these teams? So a jump ball on the on the uh, technical fouls, and that gave Ohio State on the change of possession the ball. But if there was a technical on the Indiana, they never shot free throws. Correct. We'll have to uh, figure out it. There's a foul. Back to the action. Back to the action is right. And that does leave Ohio State without their head coach. Looks like former Indiana assistant Gene Davis has taken over the reins on the Ohio State bench. Gene here a couple years back when Ted played here at Indiana in the early 80s. So Ohio State goes back to the zone. Jimenez cuts right through it. Luke Jimenez is going to have to step up and take that shot. He split the defense twice. The defense laying off of him, looking at him as a passer. He's got to let him know he can shoot the basketball. And A.J. Guyton let him know he can shoot it. Guyton went right through inside. 19 points for A.J. Guyton. Indiana's moved the lead up to 12 now. And here's Lumpkin inside. Moves on Mandeville, left-hander. The hook shot goes, and Mandeville picks up a foul. Here's Take Lumpkin. a look at it. Lumpkin doing a nice job using spins inside. Good drop step right there, got inside. Dan Licklider felt like there was too much body right there, and he'll have a chance at three-point play. Antonio good. checks in for Stringer. Very good move by the big man this time. And Lumpkin goes to the line. Can't get the three-point play. Mandeville goes down, but here come the Hoosiers. See, Luke Jimenez is out on the top of that zone. He's a little bigger, a little taller. He can see out, he can see over it. A little better passer. Mandeville nearly had that stolen and a foul. Let's see. He's going to go against Lumpkin. As he tried to reach around Mandeville to stop that shot. And we've got timeout. The action furious. You're watching Big Ten basketball on Created Sports. Bench there circled around Gene Davis. He coached four years at Indiana from 79 to 82. So there for that national championship year in 81 with Ted Kitchell. Did an outstanding job. He's an outstanding assistant and worked extremely hard at his job. Had some high school coaching experience in Ohio before coming over to Indiana. And he's from Jackson Town, Ohio. So good to see him on the Ohio State bench. He's now in his second year with the Buckeyes. And we're back underway. 11.30 to go. Right off on that three. Jimenez fighting for that ball. It goes out of bounds, though. Concession now to Ohio State. And uh, talking of that timeout, it seems to us that the two technicals were called against Ohio State, one against Indiana, so... The reason that the uh, extra free throws were not shooted, they were, the, uh, the free throws negated on both bench team technicals. So the technical was shot against the Stringer tee, and Ohio State shot on the one and one. So good, that's the reason for four free throws. Good give and go by Ohio State. A.J. Guyton with the rebound, and you can see he uses his quickness, his speed. He runs the ball up the, up the floor before Ohio State can get set. That's Ohio State's sixth team foul. Guyton's had some real challenges in the last three games. He's had to go against Stringer, Andre Woolridge, and then Kiwan Garris for Illinois. And he is really playing tough today, so I think those types of competitive games have brought the best out of Guyton. How about that? A three-pointer. A.J. Guyton from the outside. We knew you were talking about him, Laz. 22 points for the freshman Guyton. 
Well, he's played against season high, career high. He's played against three of the best. I think Juwan Garris might be the best of that group. I think he's very, very difficult to stop. And Guyton holding his own very well uh, against Stringer this afternoon, and he causes that turnover. He did cause that turnover by coming off his man and helping Stone Rook took the little extra step. Indiana has it again. The lead up to 13 points. Ohio State Guyton back in man to man. He's got another one. Five straight for Guyton. AJ Guyton, you remember he hit the first couple shots of the second half. He's really been the one man Indiana's been able to go to offensively. Good help. Lewis comes over. Jantonio on the drive and Mandible makes the steal. He dribbles out of trouble and Indiana's going to lose it. It's not good when those big guys try to dribble it. They're better off holding it, getting to the guard. Well, it was good hustle by Eisenhard right there, too. The ball got on the floor. He got after it. Charlie Miller kind of tripped, couldn't come up with it. And good hustle by Ohio State. That's basically what's kept them in this game, this entire game, is uh, a lot of good hustle going after those loose balls. Stringer back in. Singleton's back in. Coleman and Jantonio, or Coleman is out, and Lumpkin is out. So now the lead up to 15 for Indiana. Just under 10 minutes left in the game. Eisenhardt had it, let's see, on a push, Mandeville pushed him. I mean, what, what Randy Drew is going to get Mandeville on right there, he, he sticks his forearm right into Eisenhardt, and it's going to be a foul each and every time. A good pass by Ohio State. You take a look at it right now. Why don't you stick his forearm? He's got his forearm right there on his back. I mean, they're going to call a foul on you right there. Whether, you, whether you're, you know, they don't know how hard you're leaning on him, but they know you've got your hands on him, they're going to call a foul. It was before the shot, so it turned into a one and one, and Eisenhardt misses on the bonus situation. Here's Guyton again, leading the way for the Hoosiers. I think if I was Richard Manville, I'd be looking to get A.J. Guyton open about right now. He missed on that shot, but it was open. Here's Stone Rook. He bounces it off of Manville's off his, heel, off his heel and keeps it dribbling. That is tough to do. Lewis mismatched against Stone Rook. Manville comes to help, and Lewis knocks it off Stone Rook, out of bounds off the official. Art McDonald and Indiana has it. Richard Mandeville made that play by coming down and double teaming on Stone Rook. It's into Miller. I'll stay a little full court pressing now. They've got to figure a way to get back in this game. Now down 15. You've got to be able to throw over the top. There's a lot of pressure out front. Mandeville baseline. Indiana can take some time now on offense. Good passing by Indiana. Around the horn to Lewis. Good block out by Jantonio. Uh, and a little too much. Eisenhardt. He pushed, uh, uh, that's uh, Eisenhardt, number 13, his third foul. Pushed Mandeville right out of bounds. Was he pushing him or rooting him? <laughs> <laughs> was he rooting him? He was rooting him. <laughs> You're exactly right. And you go to the bench when you root on that third foul. And there he goes. <laughs> so Mandeville goes to the line. That's the 17th foul on Ohio State. a lot of things in this afternoon's game that you don't see over the course of the season. Technical fouls. Some great outside shooting. A lot of free throws taken in the game. Mandeville hits on the free throw. In the end, his largest lead up to 17. He's got six. He had both of them. Six now for Mandeville. 17 point lead. Springer goes baseline oh, very close. quick. Whew. Gets it off the backboard and in. But only a sixth point of the night. That's a charge right there. And that is the call. Michael Lewis put his right arm out as he came up with the left. Well, and it's a pretty easy call for Art McDonald because Coleman has his one foot on the out-of-bounds line. There's just no place to go. I mean, Michael Lewis has got to run over him as he did. That's his fourth foul. So Indiana really picking up the fouls here in the second half. But both teams have players that are in foul trouble. 
An interesting team, Indiana. I mean, they just got up to their largest lead, and they gave up the easy layup. They turn the ball over, they tip it in, and now all of a sudden that biggest lead goes right back down to 13. Lumpkin with position inside. Nobody blocked him out. Easy tip in. Lewis double team. Tries to get rid of it. Jimenez. Good strength by Luke Jimenez with the basketball, not letting the Ohio State team knock it away. Mandeville. They're just trapping all over the court now. Jimenez hits a three-pointer from the outside. Luke Jimenez has played an excellent game today and a nice job getting the ball where it needs to be for Indiana. Good inside and back out by Richard Mandeville and Luke Jimenez. Here's Lumpkin. He's trying to get to Mandeville. He goes again with that same move. The left-handed jump hook back into the in the uh, three-second area. And Mandeville picks up the foul. Robbie Eggers is going to come in for Richard Mandeville. Mandeville is fouled out. And that is 7.41 left. Mandeville is out. He got six points. The thing, that, the thing that I'm sure Coach Knight will see is when he looks in the film is that he wants Mandeville obviously playing back in the middle, clogging things up. But once Lumpkin starts driving the basketball, you've got to come out and meet him. You can't let him drive all the way into five feet of the basket and then try to stop him. I mean, the man's six, six foot nine, six ten, uh, 260 pounds. And Robbie Eggers in for Mandeville, picks up that first rebound. Now a whistle inside. That's going to go on Eggers on a moving screen. He was setting a pick for Jimenez and picks up the foul. So Ohio State now will go to the line. Indiana now with 10 team fouls. So two shots now for the Buckeyes. Let's, Let's take a look at it. It'll be on the right side of our screen as Rob Eggers comes into it right here. You can see he screens. I guess they felt like he was moving right there. Singleton good on that one. Best situation as far as the screen, you need to come down. Don't just run right up against the defender. Let, let your man set him up and bring him off of you. The lead is now 13 for Indiana. Can they hold on? Called in for extra duty. And that's fouled out. Ohio State full court pressing, a little half court trap there. So when it creates a turnover. When Indiana's two corner men against that press back, they stay back. There's just no way that Ohio State can cover that by throwing over the top of it. Eggers inside, goes back out to Guyton. AJ, a terrific game. Oh, good cut by Luke Jimenez. Short on that, but rebounded by Eggers. New shot clock, and I think Indiana wants to run some time. Jimenez ready for three, and he gets that one. He hesitated a second. He hesitated, but he's got great form when he lines it up. He's going to be a great shooter for Indiana. He's a little hesitant right now to take that open jump shot, but uh, a big one for Indiana right there. Makes the lead 16. There's Stringer inside off. Miller comes away with it. See Stringer wanting to pass that basketball. Indiana plays off of him, makes him shoot it, and he shoots an off-balance shot. Lob pass to Miller. Good defense by Stonerook, but they are going to call him. He had good position, but call him on the bump. Well, Indiana gets bailed out right there. That's not the pass that Coach Knight wants with, with a 16-point lead. You can see Stonerook doing nothing but holding his position. They call him for back and, uh, back and underneath Charlie Miller, but Charlie Miller is the one that's kind of come up over his back right there. It's really a poor pass, poor decision at that time. When you're ahead 16, you want to work the ball around, work time off the clock, and take a good shot. Simmel very quiet as Miller hits that one. one Give him 10 points. He scored double figures in eight of his last nine games. We had talked early in the season that Miller wasn't scoring like we knew he could, and he has been a scorer here recently. Indiana over the 80 mark. Here's Stringer. Guyton doing a good job on him. 
Kane. Singleton. Hands right there. Went from his right to his left hand. Eggers came over to help. Personal foul goes on Jimenez. I think they got Jimenez holding Lumpkin down low. But Lumpkin couldn't see it. I have to watch myself. Well, I want to call him Lumpy. You know, I think I'm watching Leave it to Beaver. He makes a heck of a tight end, I'll tell you. Pressed into duty here on the basketball team, and Winston comes back in. Lumpkin leads with 11, so he's had a big scoring game, only averaging three a game. So he's been out to score here this afternoon. Full court pressure more of a man-to-man uh, -man type of pressure. Now this time Robbie Eggers does a nice job stepping up in the middle. This is where you want to break the press. Lewis on the drive and a push. This will go against Stringer. And a technical foul on Stringer. That's After the call was made, that's two technicals on him and he's out. That's his second. He's gone. It's his fifth foul anyway. Sam Licklider wants him off the floor. As he motions to the Ohio State bench, there's Gene Davis. So he'll be sent to the locker room as Gene Davis just tells him that. So Indiana will get some free throws here. They'll get two free throws for the foul. They'll get two more for the technical, and then they get the basketball. So Lewis was fouled on the drive, so he'll shoot the two for being fouled. Ohio State's over the limit, so it's a double free throw, two shots for Lewis, and then a technical, two technical free throws foul. Let's watch the play. Look at it right there. Now, they, they, they called it outside. You can see... Stringer pr pr probably more more upset than anything because it, it was his fifth foul. So he knew that he was gone from the game. He's upset. There's still five minutes to go. He's trying to bring his team back. So he jumped up in the air. With the th way things have gone this afternoon, that's just something uh, the officials did not need at that point in time. And uh, be in the wrong place at the wrong time, he got his second technical. So Lewis, uh, let's see the scores table. Signal the official. Originally a one and one. Now they're calling two free throws for Lewis. For 10. 10 team fouls on Ohio State. Lewis hits the first. Imagine Michael Lewis will stand up there and shoot all four. Let's see. He's getting some freebies getting to stand up there and shoot free throws today. And he doesn't look around at all. He's just sticking right there to take now the technical fouls. And once you get in that zone, you just kind of like to keep standing there and keep firing. 16 now for Lewis, 17. Oh, three of four once again. Three out of four. There's Gene Davis on the Ohio State bench. And Indiana retains possession. And now the lead up to 19 points. where Indiana would like to spread it out as Ohio State has tried to do against them today. Really spread the court out, make Ohio State guard you, especially without Stringer in there, Ohio State's quickest player. Lewis has it. Here's Miller. Good pass by Michael Lewis. Hangers high off the board, and Lumpkin comes away with that one. Stone Rook, double team, good job by Eggers. Guyton now helps out, and Lumpkin moves around inside to get that shot. Indiana staying in their regular offense, not going to a high or a spread out type of offense. Just going to stay in what they've been doing all day. Five minutes left. Lewis leaves his feet and goes to Guyton. It's kind of amazing Indiana's done this with real, without of the big men really being the, the main focus in their offense all day. Their three point guards have really kind of done it all offensively for them. Well, a lot of points racked up by this Hoosier team. Two seconds. 
Guyton saw it. The ball was shot, but didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock didn't reset. Guyton had to take a quick shot, nearly hit it. A.J. Guyton, he, he's not used to having Coach Knight jump up at him and say shoot when he's 30 feet away, you know? That's right. <laughs> he didn't hit the rim. Indiana couldn't get the basket, though. 17-point lead. Quick shot. This is Winston outside. Once again, Ohio State answered. Two field goals in a row. Last two times down the floor, Indiana had it up to 19. Now it's back to 15. Lewis beats Singleton. Lumpkin goes down. Good no call. Here's Lewis. There's just not a lot of room to drive. Indiana's real tight along that lane. Charlie Miller continues to post in there. Oh, Eggers way up and tried to slam it down. Stonerook leading the break. Jimenez hands in there to knock it away. Good read by Luke Jimenez. Good defense. Indiana has built it now to a 15-point lead. You are watching Big Ten basketball on Creative Sports. All year he's played some in each half. Andre Patterson on crutches has not been in the game at all. So Indiana's gone to outside scoring. And it's the guards who have done a lot of damage. Indiana has gone to the free throw line 42 times in tonight's game. That's a new season high. And that is the way they've won many a game this season by going to the line. And that is how they're going to win this one. If they do hang on, 345 left. They lead it by 15. Mike, 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 Mike. Ohio State taking a lot of time to score. They don't have that luxury right now. time to run the 35 second shot clock down it's at five and steal winston's got it forces a three doesn't hit the rim so shot clock violation by ohio state good defense by indiana but ohio state needs to be a little bit more aggressive offensively they need to find a shot without stringer in there running their offense uh, nobody really taking control lewis brings it up slowly as indiana will run Forced into the three-second lane. Travel on A.J. Guyton. Not the place to take the ball. Indiana continues to keep their offense way down on that baseline. Very surprised they haven't, they haven't come up into a little bit higher type of offense and use their quickness that they have in there right now with Guyton, Lewis, Luke Jimenez. High offense by Ohio State. Who Indiana wants to handle that ball is Lumpkin. Guyton stepped on the line as he went for that save. And now it's time for our Synergy Power Player of the Game, brought to you by Synergy, the power behind PSI Energy. And it is A.J. Guyton. A terrific game for the freshman. A career high in points tonight with 23. Lumpkin on the tip. It's off. And we've got a foul. Well, Luke Jimenez, they got him backing into Lumpkin. Make that 24 see. points for Guy. He was hot from the three-point line. Career high, 24 points for our Synergy player of the game, A.J. Guy. Good choice. Good. Very good choice. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sometimes we don't always agree on that, but this time we did, huh? Lumpkin at the line. And he's short with that one. He's played a long time in there with four fouls this afternoon. With about the 18 minute mark of the second half, he picked up his fourth foul and he's still in there. Some hanging the on. State, and now he comes out. He leaves with 14 points. Otis Winston in. And because Ohio State needs to go to full court pressure, come up with some steals. Lewis tries to dribble through. Stolen. And Coleman's got the jam. Not the time to dribble through the trap. Here's Jimenez. Sees the trap and pulls it back. A.J. Guyton's the guy you got to get the ball in his hands. He's the quickest guy, one of the best free throw shooters. He's the guy you want the ball in his hands. Carlos Davis will pick up that foul. And Miller will be the line. I'm surprised you're seeing Neil Reed come back in the game. He is the best free throw shooter on the team and also a very good ball. And Lumpkin comes back in for offense. Big hand. This crowd likes the job. 
that Luke has done. Six points, but a lot of hustle all over the court. So Miller at the line now. And Miller hits both. 36 free throws made by Indiana this afternoon. That's a new season high. Stolen by Eggers. He picks Good it up. Hands by Robbie Eggers right there going after the basketball. Holman picks up that foul. And Robbie Eggers goes to the line. Coleman just lost it out of his hands. I don't know if his hands are slick the ball or whatever, but anyway, went up for the jump shot. Lost it out of his hands. Good awareness by Robbie Eggers to go after the basketball. Here's Coleman on the Ohio State bench. And Eggers goes to the line. Eggers, a lot of rotation on that free throw. Time now for our key play of the game sponsored by Key Bank the key for a new America it's AJ Guyton a season high 24 points there's three of them right there as Guyton hit from the outside really the guy that kept Indiana in the game when Indiana had a big lead in the second half Indiana really lost that lead early in the second half and AJ Guyton the guy that stepped up and hit some really big jump shots for him pass deflected away Winston recovers Stonebrook thought about it way outside. Under two minutes now and a foul on the drive. The personal foul, Indiana, number three, Charlie Miller, is fourth personal. Miller now has four. Coleman and Singleton back in. Anticipating a press now by Ohio State. But Indiana now up 16 points, 149 left. Coach Knight has taken a seat in the bleachers at the north end of Assembly Hall. Much uh, similar to uh, the way a fan would watch a game here at Assembly Hall. Stonebrook at the line and good. Indiana now by 14. There he is in the bleachers. Just uh, next to the team bench. Timeout called by Indiana. You think he'll keep that seat during the timeout? He is up and no. ready to deal with He's up. Up. a 20 second timeout. So it has been quite a game. I, I guess the positive side is, Ted, that this team came in here looking for a victory and they're going to get it. And a game played with a lot of emotion, too. Uh, it's, it's it definitely was played with a lot of emotion, but uh, this I mean, it just really doesn't believe totally in itself right now. You know, it's got stretches where it will really play well. You see a lot of emotion. They do some good things, but they really don't have that total belief that they can get it done. And uh, because of that, they've lost some games that they probably should have won here in the Big Ten. This would move Indiana to five and six in conference play. Ohio State would go to four and seven. Charlie Miller on the baseline is in and out. Eggers fights for the rebound. Good job by Robbie Eggers. I mean, that, that's just a huge play for Indiana. They're struggling right now, but Neil Reed going to the line does a nice job drawing the foul once again. Ohio State needed that foul just to stop the clock. And Reed will be at the line. You know, I, I talk about the team believing. You know, it's kind of like the guy last year, your big golfer, the the guy, uh, you know, with two, two guys putting. You know, the, the one guy believes he's going to make it, like Ben Crenshaw, and he seems to make everything. The other guy, he kind of he hopes he makes them. And uh, I, I think this team, you know, is kind of in that mode of, boy, I hope we play well rather than just going out there and knowing we're going to play well like we've seen so many Indiana teams do before. Right. It's a team that has not been shooting well in the low 40s. And they've struggled that. They've made up for it from the free throw line. But if they can't get to the free throw line, then it seems to struggle. Tonight, they've been able to get to that line. And it's got the 90-74 lead. As we fall just under a minute. Winston outside. It's off. And Eggers comes away with that board. Clock goes under a minute. And Reed's got it. Here's Guyton. Up to the Miller. And they break the press easily. 
Ohio State seems content to let Indiana run the clock down. 15 to shoot. Dean Davis is telling him not foul. Let's run the clock, clock off. It's been a long day. Let's get out of here. And Singleton picks up the foul, though. So Reed goes back to the line. Second consecutive game that Ohio State's going to have given up over 90 points. They gave up 94 to the Purdue. Foul, Ohio State. Antonio is in for the Buckeyes for Indiana. Larry Richardson comes in and Gene Paul does as well. Reed leaves. And Charlie Miller leaves. Congratulated on the Indiana bench. There's Larry. 6'9 freshman, 220. Now for Ohio State. Steele in 55. 34 is Jeremy May. 44 is Eric Hanna. Lewis missed on that free throw. second 30 seconds left 18 now for Michael Lewis so a big game for Lewis inside pass to Winston he gets it off the board and a foul on Lewis points five assists for Michael Lewis but a silly foul to leave the game take some luster off that fine performance Winston misses Michael Lewis did a heck of a job in there today he did a nice job at Iowa the other night he, he had a, handed out 11 assists he did things Indiana needed done today and uh, I think he should be congratulated for his effort it's an awfully good job and a big win that Indiana needed very badly today should know there's a foul push on Ohio State. That one on Winston. Just one second left, so Jimenez will get to the line. That's five on Winston. So he is out. One more substitution Gene Davis will need to make. And that will do it. Carlos Davis checks in. And Jimenez goes to the line. Jimenez has had a great game tonight. Has this been a long game, lads? Uh, this is, uh, or am I dreaming? This is of NBA length. Uh, this game carried on a long time, and a game with free throws will do that. Jan Antonio misses, and Indiana, 93 points, a new season high. And the coaches, Bob Knight and Gene Davis, meet each other at halftime. Indiana wins it to go to four and six on the season, five and six on the season.